Draft, what's up, brother? Great joy, what's up, brother? Greetings. You gotta unmute, Great joy. You gotta unmute. How's it going? Can you hear me? Yep, yep. We got you. We got you. <laughs> cool, brother man. <laughs> so your yeah. Being here today. And, and yeah. This beautiful thing that we got going. Um, really excited. I'm letting a few more people as they're coming in. Uh, letting them get situated. How's how's the day been for you, gentlemen? Yeah, I mean, it's been busy. I've been busy with a lot of work, you know, so I'm all right, but we just have to push, keep on pushing. Busy is good. <laughs> busy is always good. What about you, yeah. Um, Yeah, I, I basically re released a print this morning, so yeah, it's been chasing, chasing, making all that happen today. So yeah, it's nice to uh, sit down and, and unwind, so to speak. So yeah, I'm really enjoying yeah. this chat. Yes. How's it, Trev? How are you doing, man? I'm all right, man. How's it going? All good, all good. All good. good, good to speak. Good, man. Yeah. So I'm, I'm finally very, seeing you now. I'm I'm very excited to have uh, everyone here, um, and also you guys as well, and for and for participating in our exhibition, and looking forward to just hearing your thoughts about the exhibition, the experience, and also just the stories behind the work. Um, we've gotten a lot of great uh, just feedback from the show. Um, so I kind of wanted to introduce the show to the folks that maybe haven't read the uh, show's details of the press release. Um, but the show is called Portraits of Yesteryear. Um, I'll make sure that everyone has a link in the chat so that you can actually take a look at it while we're going through everything. Let me get that ready for you. So everyone can check over to the chat and follow along with us as we go through the different works. Um, so yes, Portraits of Yesteryear pretty much was an exhibition. I wanted it to be a virtual, not a virtual, I'm sorry, a physical exhibition at first, but of course our current uh, measures that we have in our country uh, is not allowing us to do that. So it gave me a great opportunity to try something new uh, to use that same con same concept and also be able to work with artists from around the world and not have to worry about, you know, the art business things like shipping and all of that type of good stuff, but to really collaborate and also introduce a new environment uh, to artists that may or may have not um, experienced this before or may have not even known uh, what's, what's to come. Um, so Great Joy and Dreff, they were two of the artists, uh, two of the amazing artists. I'm glad to say I've had to work within this show. Uh, all of the artists have just been so just productive and amazing and just really, really taking hold of the theme of the exhibition. So Portraits of Yesteryear pretty much is not defining what a portrait is, but looking at those different moments in our life to where we've experienced change, to where we've seen people change in their emotions, in their, um, in their workplaces, in their families, different things has allowed us to change. So these images and these uh, stories by these artists were the visual representations of these uh, experiences. So uh, with that being said, um, I want to start with uh, introducing the artists, a uh, little bit of their background so you can kind of get to know them. And then we'll go into touring the exhibition and checking out their beautiful works. So we'll start with uh, Great Joy. We'll start with you first. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Great Joy. Um, I'm based in Johannesburg. I'm in the city, city center. Yeah. So I've, I've, I've been practicing, you know, for like five years now. And I'm more of like an expressionist. Uh, I do more figurative work and I deal with issues surrounding men and emotions. So I'm actually uh, a full-time uh, practicing artist. Nice. nice. So what's, what's the artistic culture like in Johannesburg? Explain an, yeah. art, an art night in Johannesburg. Uh, jo Joburg is a vibrant city. Joburg is a vibrant city. There's so many different um, artists here. We do have 
a lot of practicing artists, full-time artists, you know, because uh, there's this, our, art, our art industry is, a, you know, is a bit wider, you know, than other cities, you know, in Africa, you know, so there's, there's a lot of art business happening here. So we do have like, more, uh, like many international art fairs, you know, uh, we do have like Joburg Art Fair, Tavern Art Fair, you know, different forms of art fairs, you know, so it's, it's a pretty good place to be, you know, as a creative. And how would you explain your work to, uh, yeah. the, to your, a collector or someone who's just been introduced to you? Yeah, um, I'm more of an expressionist. I can say so. I'm more of uh, a drawer, you know, I like drawing, you know, I like drawing more than painting basically because that was the basic skill which I learned when I was at school. I, 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 I love, you know, um, breaking the boundaries, you know, I, I, I push to the limits, you know, I love expressing, you know, human anatomy, you know, like that's why most of my works is about movement and motion and motion, you know, so I'm more of like an expressionist, you know, that's how I, I see myself every day. And that's what I get from people most of the time you know, who, who love buying art and stuff. Definitely. And Jeff, like, give yeah. us a little bit of background on your process and how you approach your artwork, your art, art I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so my name's Nikwe Dreff. Uh, Dreff was, uh, uh, really was my tag that I had from uh, around 1990 to this point. And um, a few years ago, I started to use my, my birth name together with my tag. So it's Nikwe Dreff. So uh, I, start, I started in... Um, really my interest, introduction into art was through comics. Um, we had a, a, a UK underground uh, comic called 2000 AD. And we also had like a uh, tank girl, which was um, drawn by jo Jamie Hewlett, who's famous doing the gorillas. Um, and uh, I, I was really into comics. That's, that's got me interested in art. And around that same time, we also had like the, the kind of hip hop explosion came to the UK and interested in break dancing, but also like, really interested in the visual aspect of, of, of hip hop, which was essentially graffiti. Um, the, the graffiti art also that was, you know, uh, brought as a package to the UK. So, you know, we got into that as kids. And by the time we got to 1990, we wanted to branch out and start to travel from our, our hometown of Windsor to, to London and became very active uh, um, in, the, in the train scene in London. Um, got busted a few times. Uh, started to like be a bit more careful, slowed down, went to university and so forth. And then, you know, I'd say for the last, in between that period of time, 1997, um, till quite recently, was really just trying to find my way. Um, as much as, you know, doing uh, portraiture, also doing uh, traditional graffiti. And then 2016 stroke 17, I was doing a lot of, um, really just trying to like understand how, how I could tra transfer the different elements of what I was doing into to smaller scale in terms of like, I started on wood essentially in my bedroom doing acrylics and then moved into doing oil paints. And then, you know, as someone who's used to painting big, I wanted to find a way to, uh, you know, work on a large scale without, you know, without, I didn't have a studio at that time. So I thought, let me just bring everything that I'd learned together and, actually take the portraits into the street, but using all this kind of like techniques um, that I'd learned from, from um, oil painting and perhaps the use of color that I was using in the traditional graffiti and bring the two things together. And, and, and that's what I did. But my thing was, um, you know, always painting from real, real, real people from my own social, social, social circles and then using social media to tell their stories and um, painting, not just singular paintings, but series of paintings. So I did several series of paintings in the streets where, you know, one particular series, the You Are Enough series, probably the series that people know me for the most, was um, 10 paintings of black women in different parts of London. Um, and then using, like I said, social media to tell those stories. So that's essentially my practice um, up, to, up, to, up to sort of lockdown. And then there was a little bit of a departure from that, which I'm sure we'll talk about during the talk. Most definitely, most definitely. And 
with both of you guys seeming to paint very, very large um, and great joy, especially with your canvas in the, in the show, is there any disadvantages to transitioning to a smaller canvas or transitioning to outside in the public space from being uh, uh, working internally in the studio on, in, in, on a larger canvas space? Um, actually, you know, when I was starting, I, I used to do a more, more A2s. I used to use a sketch, my sketchbook a lot, you know, uh, as I was maturing, you know, I wanted to go big because uh, I realized that, you know, you know, doing big paintings and big drawings, you know, that's for me, you know, I'm not like a small scale artist, you know, like I don't like painting you know, in, you know, small painting, small scale canvas, small scale sketchbooks, and that wasn't for me. You know, I, I I love the scale, you know, because there's a sense of presence attached to it, you know, and the substance, you know, and also I can manage to, you know, improvise and also emphasize on my figures and the emotion and the movement, and also can freely work properly without any limitations. So that's why I like transitioned into like painting big paintings because that that kind of like works for me you know it gives me that freedom yeah Jeff is that kind of like how you feel when you go to the when you're doing uh, public works to where the larger works kind of have more of a presence to the subject or even to the community oh without a shadow of a doubt like painting painting in the street is is very very different to painting in 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 the comfort of a, of a studio space Essentially, when you're painting the street, there's this, I, 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 you know, everybody has a different approach, but my approach is that I feel a sense of responsibility to, to the, the place that I'm painting, because I, I'm often going and painting in an area that I don't live in. I'm going to spend a minimum three days, maybe a week paint, doing a painting and then leave. And those people have to engage in that, in that work. So to some degree, I, I, I'm, I'm mindful of, of the work that I, I leave there. And to the best of my ability, I try to do something that, um, speaks to the community um, in some way. And um, the funny thing about this, the, 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 you know, the street paintings, I always say is that like, when you paint in the studio, you do your work in the dark. And when you're ready, when you're happy, then you show it in the, in the light. Whereas in the street is the complete other way around where every single mistake that you make, every bit of working out that you do, every stress that you have, every, you know, if you're working on a machine and the machine stops working, everybody can see every aspect of this and um well at the same time that's what I, I love about the street i love that energy i love that being on the edge i love that challenge and i love the 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 you know if you're able to overcome those challenges and do a piece that you know you're, you're happy with that's been successful and definitely if it's, if it's a piece that you know, you know is well received or has is impactful in some way to the community um then that's fantastic that's a win most definitely so when when we first started to talk about this exhibition, how did you both see your works translating into a virtual space? Uh, Great Joy, we'll start with you. Yeah, so um, basically this work has been part of my recent series, uh, Title Chain of Command. You know, uh, I've been working on my concepts, you know, uh, gradually, you know, because of COVID, COVID came through early this year, you know, there was lockdown in our country, you know, almost everywhere in the world there was lockdown. But, you know, I wasn't going as regularly to the studio. So um, I was working at home, you know, theoretically working on, you know, my concepts and how I can convey the story in a proper, fascinating way. So I started working on this piece, uh, the protest, you know, uh, it started with, you know, the anti-corruption uh, movements, you know, here in, here in Africa, because in so many countries, you know, uh, there was so much commotion, you know, because of job losses, you know, there were so many problems. People were struggling financially, you know, even mentally, because also uh, gender-based violence was even high, you know, in South Africa, you know, so many high divorce rates, there was so much commotion. So I wanted to create a piece which evokes emotion, you know, where there's so much, you know, composition, you know, I wanted to create composition and also create something which is going to, you know, uh, 
convey statement, you know, in a way like to capture contemporary times, you know, because this is what we're facing, you know, mostly in African countries. So uh, I ended up creating this piece, the protest, because I, I felt like it was relevant to the times and it was necessary for me as an African artist to create something of that nature. Most definitely, and I'm going to show the space and enter the exhibition so that everyone can see the space uh, straight up and get ready to do a nice little spin. So as we go into the piece um, yep. and we listen to you talk about it, let's dig a little bit yep. deeper. Like, tell us what we're looking at. Okay, cool. So uh, also the ideology came from, you remember when you know, um, the death of George Floyd, you know, uh, in America, right? In yes. your country. So there was, there was just so much commotion just all over the world, you know, because also the idea of Black Lives Matter was something very important by that time. Even now, still very important, but by that time, I think, you know, there was high alert, you know, in that matter because you know, there were so many things happening and people started realizing actually this matters, you know, even in our, even in our, uh, our home state, you know, in our country, you know, people started realizing that the idea of racism is very, 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 very crucial, you know, and we need to um, voice out, you know, we need to um, take, I have an understanding and also, um, express how we feel, especially people of color. So actually, this piece is a portrayal of, you know, mixture, mixture of instances, mixture of protests around the world. Mm. So it also, yeah, so it also intertwines the story here in South Africa, you know, the idea of gender-based violence, you know, corruption. And so actually, this is like um, a, a, a piece which, which says a lot about people being uh, being unstable or being or dissatisfied by you know the, 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 the nature the nature of circumstances you know so uh, that's why I, I, I titled the protest you know because I didn't want to box it into you know into this one one umbrella uh, situation you know so I wanted to kind of like uh, create like a generic, you know, a generic title, you know, which expresses uh, advocacy for something good, you know, that's why I, it's under part of the, the series Chain of Command. So Chain of Command, you know, it's a series which is aligned to, to change, you know, yeah. So are, were these images of people that you've come across that you've seen or different yeah. uh, photos or how did you so know? Actually, yeah. Yeah. So actually, the reference of this piece, right, was I, I, I worked with this other photographer. So I had to merge images also again with certain, you know, with certain references which I got from, from uh, the, the, the actual uh, protests, you know, which were happening mm -hmm. by the time all over the world. So I had to, ma I had to merge images and references from different photographers to create one piece and the title wow. of the protest. Yeah. Wow. So essentially it's a very global piece because yeah. people are from around the world. Um, Absolutely. Were, you, were you, know, you watching different news as you were creating it or was this something that, you know, you just, you, it just was the experience and you just see it or was these are just, you know, going through social media capturing folks or looking on the news and saying, wow, this and that, or how, how did you come across like a lot of these images? Okay, cool. So what happened is, you know, during lockdown, most of the time I was at home, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the media was always, you know, telling stories, you know, especially negative stories, which were happening around the world, you know, so many job losses, you know, there was Black Lives Matter movements, there was gender-based violence in South Africa. There was anti-pro, you know, anti-corruption in Zim. There was just a lot of commotion around the world. So the idea of 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 uh, what you call it, of taking the peace, the protest, or creating the peace, the protest, 
it was based on the idea of commotion around the world because of COVID and, you know, the experiences which people uh, were partaking on. And what's this piece created then? And how long did it take you to really uh, bring this thing to fruition? Because it's huge. Uh, yeah, it is like a three meter by two. So it took me like uh, four months, four months, because I had to gather, you know, I had to gather information and also to, you know, gradually, you know, gather information and also create something which will, you know, uh, come out right, you know, in terms of aesthetic values, you know. So uh, it took me some time because I was also multitasking with other pieces of, you know, because I was very busy, you know, with other shows and stuff. So we see you have the piece behind you. What's your favorite? What's your favorite section about this piece, or which part of this painting really brings uh, out the the moment for you? Uh, the lady holding the the phone, because <laughs> she's capturing the times, you know. So mm -hmm. it it kind of, you know, it, it 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 creates that playfulness in the painting. For mm. me, I think it's, it's, you know, that part for me, it's, it's, it's interesting. And also the trip, you know, the, the, the trip which uh, symbolizes, you know, the, 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 the aftermath, you know. Mm. It symbolizes the aftermath and commotion, you know. Tear gas, you know. It's like a more of like an expressive piece, actually. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an expression of anger, you know. There's, there's elements of sacredness attached to this piece. So for me, you know, because lately I've been doing more colorful works and, you know, the gold leaf and stuff, you know, I haven't been doing like monochrome pieces. But this one for me, you know, the, it, it's something different, you know, and, and, and expressive yet simple, you know. So uh, it's interesting. <laughs> No, I, I, think it's, I think it's beautiful. One <laughs> thing you enlightened me to was the the drips you know being kind of like the tear gas or the smoke i didn't i didn't catch that on the initial <laughs> uh viewing of the painting and i think that's a, a, a very you know just very interesting part of it especially how it's traveling down you know the 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 subjects you know faces down on the on the uh the bottom row of the portraiture it's 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 really yeah. just amazing and also kind of like that little uh, the start and stops at the top. Mm. Uh, it kind of mm. reminds me of like a, a Jenny Seville or uh, Cy Twombly ish, where they're making different marks and things like that yeah. in that work. And I always thought that was very cool. Is that is that or was that a starting point or was that something that you abandoned um, as part of it or is that just you know a, a, a mark that just happened to be? Yeah made in a studio. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I feel sometimes with when we're creating art, you know, you must know when to stop. I think it's one of the biggest tricks for artists. You must know when to stop because you can overwork, you know, you can overwork the piece or, you know, you end up inserting stuff which wasn't supposed to be there. You know, the most important thing is the connection and, you know, that, that, that what you call it, that the, um, what do you call it, uh, first impression of the mm -hmm. piece matters, you know. Uh, you don't have to overwork the piece or justify the piece. The piece must speak for itself, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm more of, I'm more of an expressionist than, <laughs> than a, a talker. I don't talk too yeah. much, you know. Yeah. I, 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 I speak through art and art is something which is very important, you know, to, 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 to express yourself as an individual, because I think that the idea of, 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 of understanding when to stop is very important, you know, because sometimes you can overwork stuff and it ends up, you know, it becomes clutter, you know, and yeah. it, you know, it's challenging the eye. Most definitely. So as we start to transition to uh, Nikkei Dreff's work, uh, we get to back up out of the beautiful piece um, and we spin around, passing, passing Amy and everyone else 
and get to slide over to Jeff's piece. Once I get to move this thing over. This beautiful work here. I love all the works in this show. Um, the, one, the one contrast I love about the two works is that the focus is on a group versus an individual, you know, and also the monochrome versus the a lot the 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 just burst of color, uh, which kind of gives like almost that same emotion to where it's like I'm 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 waiting for a change, you know. But in your painting, Great Joy, it's like they're actively out there pursuing it. And in, in uh, Nikkei Dreft's painting, it's like, you know what? You said it was going to come. Now I'm just waiting. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm beat down by this, you know? So Dreft, can you give us a little background on the history and the story of this work? Yeah, so um, at the, um, uh, in February, I, I went to um, uh, Ghana and um, uh, the, the traveling to Ghana and the traveling back was very different. By the time we were coming back, um, we got to the airport and there was, the you know, they had the thermometers, they were checking our temperatures and whatnot. And I kind of started to realize that there was, there was a, some sort of shift happening. Mm -hmm. um, and by the time we got to the UK, um, I started, I was, I was, at that time I was secondary school teacher, art teacher. And um, I, was, I, was, I was looking around the school and I was having conversations with some friends in Italy, telling me what was happening in Italy, kind of screaming at me like, you know, don't go on the tubes, don't be teaching, it's crazy, you don't know what's going on here, blah, blah, blah. And um, lo and behold, uh, two weeks, three weeks later, um, I, fell, I fell ill, um, not seriously ill, but, um, you know, I, re I realized that, you know, things, things were happening. Um, and uh, two, two or three days later, we, 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 were, we found ourselves in lockdown here. So, you know, um, as, as that was my main source of income as a teacher, I was, you know, I had a little freak out for a week. And um, then I thought, right, what are we going to do? You know, what, what, what do I do here? Like, what do we have and what have I lost? And I thought, I've lost a lot of things, but one thing I've gained is time. And one thing I've, I've, I, I've always wanted was time to really focus on my practice. And fortunately, I have a studio. Um, I had a studio that was about nine to ten minutes from um, from where we, from where I live, and um, there's only three or four uh, artists uh, practicing in that studio space. So I literally went there every single day. It was it was my sanctuary. I, I went every single day, and um, at first I, I just tried to make work with some imagery that I had just to get 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 the motion. And then um, my, you know, I have my son every other weekend and, uh, you know, he, he, he sat for me. I did a painting of him and I, 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 I deliberately wanted to focus on something that I, I was um, uh, not running towards, which was figurative work. I always wanted to do figurative work, but always it was, was sitting in my comfort zone of Portugal because I knew so, there's something that I could do. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really challenged myself to, to, to do a full figure. And um, then I did my partner, Mel, uh, and then following from that, um, uh, Sabrina, who's a friend of ours, she, um, she, she, she basically lives alone. She's a hairdresser, so she wasn't working and she wasn't interacting with anyone either. Mm -hmm. So um, she, she came and visited. We did a social, social distanced um, studio visit. And um, we, before, before I do my, 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 my shoots or whatnot, I always try to have a discussion first, you know, just have a, have a chat, fireside chat, just see how everybody's doing, whatnot. Yeah. And she, this is the way she sat on the chair. And I was like, whoa, you know, like that, 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 that the way you're sitting on the chair and the way you're, just everything about it was, was perfect. Mm -hmm. So then we, um, we, we progressed to, uh, you know, I actually do the shoot. And um, I thought, no, let me go back to that, that original thing that uh, really sparked my interest at the beginning of the, um, the visit and um yeah she she sat in the same way and it was it was perfect so um what i decided during lockdown was that i'll do multiple pieces of work and treat the whole process as, as not trying to finish work but to try and learn from each painting so mm -hmm. everything that i'm struggling with let me let me work it through this painting and then once i've locked that down then i can 
use that in the other painting. So I'm basically building a body of work simultaneously. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I was doing. So this was a painting that I was almost finished, but there was lots of things that I wasn't happy with. I decided I was going to uh, uh, leave it um, and, and move on to other things. And then obviously when lockdown um, ended, so to speak, um, I had lots of other opportunities in terms of like uh, uh, street, street work and um, murals and whatnot. So I, f I focused on that and then um, of late, I've been focusing once again on, on building this body of work. So when you called, when, you, when I got the call from you, um, it was a no brainer because this painting was about what you were talking about. Yeah. Um, and and I was, I'd, I'd spent enough time away from the painting to know how to move forward on it and bring it to a conclusion. So that's what I did. Um, I worked on finishing the painting um, essentially, it was just some small details like the head and the hands and whatnot. Again, you know, um, just 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 getting it to a point, and um, yeah, and then I, I submitted it to the um, to the show, and and I loved it. So let's let's talk about Sabrina's reaction. Um, you know, as many of many portraits that you've done, um, how was her reaction different? to uh, any, anyone, any, uh, any of your other subjects, I'm sorry. Okay, if I'm gonna be really honest, Sabrina is just different. <laughs> so, 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 so like, it, it, it's, it's so interesting, like, um, when, when, you know, when you're painting somebody's portrait, especially if you're painting somebody's portrait with the intention of painting it huge on the side of a, of a, of a wall, um, it's just really interesting getting to know the person intimately on that level for that reason you get to see a different side of them and um sabrina was very much kind of like i trust you do your thing i don't need to see the painting in progress just do your thing yeah. very much and um i um I, I was i was working through 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 the painting and um she wasn't you know she didn't really want to see like i said any any works in progress and when I showed her the, the final, the final piece, I think she was um, a, a bit um, shocked that yeah, <laughs> I, I'd, I'd captured so many details of her in terms of like it wasn't so much you know my my thing is not about just the likeness. The likeness is important to me, but it's not just about it. it's about capturing the essence of the person. And yeah. you know, definitely in this in this instance, like you know, I wanted to capture a moment in time. Uh, you know, how we were all feeling, you know, when I say that, I mean, on a gro global level. Um, she absolutely loved her legs. You know, I, you know, I think she felt that that was her, her, her <laughs> best feature. So uh, I, didn't wanna, I didn't want to let her, her down in that regard. I don't want to let anybody down, but I want to make sure that that was on point. Um, yeah, so, and that's the point kind of everybody seems to be um, focusing on the feet. Um, so yeah, it, it, it was really cool. And, and again, you know, when I, I said to her that I was going to make a print, she was like, yeah, do your thing. Um, I don't think she kind of realized that it was actually going to be, um, it's going to come to fruition. Yeah, so, I mean, my my favorite part uh, when I saw it uh, first was caught me was the background. Um, and it kind of made me feel like a drone shot of uh, Africa, you know, like, right. of, like the African field. Um, of, you know, just going up on a village and seeing, you know, almost like where she's from, that village in Ghana, maybe where she's from. So my first initial feeling was, okay, you know, that's her land. That's, you know, her essence. That's where she's from. And that kind of, that say it again. Let me just write that down. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like that, it, it, it kind of like, you know, and the chair kind of like almost made me think of her having high esteem in that area. You know what I mean? Because the chair is so pristine, you know, in this work, you know, it's so prominent. It's, it's gaining so much of the attention, you know, to where it's, it's like, wow, okay, what is it about this chair, you know, that I should know? Actually, that's, that's a good question. What kind of chair was that? Um, to be honest, um, my, my missus wanted to upgrade the chairs in the house. <laughs> so I, each day, I, each, each day during lockdown, I'd take them to the studio. Um, but the chair looked nothing like this. I, I've taken, apart from her 
in terms of her as the figure and her clothing, I've taken mm -hmm. liberties with everything else. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously it wasn't, it wasn't orange. It wasn't an orange day and the chair was actually black. So I had to do a lot of working out because I thought, ah, it'll be easy. You know, when you're doing yeah. the, the sketch and it's white and it's like, oh, white, white, I'll leave it white because that looks, you know, it, it, you know, you're, the way you're explaining how you're reading it, like there's things that happen that you don't necessarily are able to articulate in your own mind. You just, mm -hmm. uh, um, and th th now you're talking about it. Yes, there's some correlation between the chair and the, 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 prist the, the, the pristineness of the floor and the fact that she's outside and she doesn't have her shoes on and she looks relaxed, but then she looks, you know, it, there's a lot of juxtap juxtaposition going on, a lot of, um, you, you know, things happening simultaneously that um, I guess I wanted to uh, include in the work, but wasn't necessarily uh, compartmentalizing in that way. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of details, you know, that immediately pop, you know, just like in Great Joy's piece that immediately stand out. Those two were a thing. And then a very subtle uh, detail that I found amazing was like her toenail polish. You know, like the toenail polish was like a great contrast to everything else, because even though that's a very small detail, it seems very large in this painting because your your eyes kind of go to that. Like when you look at it, for me at least, it was, you know, the background, like I said, the chair and then her feet. Because as you go down each part, you know, yes, like the, the, the legs are well done and all that, but it's the toenails that kind of symbolize that even through all of this, she's still going to remain pretty. She's still going to remain herself. You know, she's well, still going to, you know, cater and take care of herself and, you know, do a lot of self, uh, uh, you know, just self-care. That's really, it's really interesting that you say that. One thing I didn't say is that Sabrina is actually like a really successful uh, hairdresser. Mm -hmm. So what you're talking about is, is her. And I guess, you know, when you're making work, you decide on what things to emphasize what things to leave out what yeah. things to change slightly you know the artistic license and and that was something that I, I you know i took a lot of time making sure that the way that her feet um that her, her feet are faithful to how it was not just in the terms of the um the the, the polish but also how they were actually um how she was actually sitting uh, it was really important that I, I got that across because that's that's the uh, the vibe that I got when we originally um, were taking the ref reference images. So yeah, it's nice. It's nice that you 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 picked up on that because it's definitely something I, I took very seriously. Yeah, I mean it's 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 very very uh, straightforward and matter of fact. And the one thing that I liked that was a comparison in both of your works is the the motion like or the 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 non motion or the emotion or however you say that but um you know just the look the look on her face and also like great joy said the the person with the camera you know and then the different drips of the smoke with but the paint you know those those are different moments of you know capturing certain scenes like he was it's almost like you were able to pull a specific moment out of great joy's painting you know in a sense or you're lending those type of vibes to each other's work you know what i mean because maybe sabrina was one of those people that was you know of course she you know said she didn't get up go out but in spirit she's one of those people you know what i mean to where she's fighting she's you know sick and tired of you know, what's happening out in the world, and that's showing on her face. So, in an essence, she could be a character in Great Joy's painting. You know, well, that's... I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, when I, when I look at Great Joy's work, like, the, the work that uh, I like is the work that you, you see on different levels. You know, you, you get the... He said, uh, um, first impressions matter. And, you know, you get that. You know, it's big... Yeah. It's the, the energy is crazy. It's you know very intentional, um, and and so much you know so much going on. You, you get that. Then you start breaking it down, and seeing all the different things happening in in, in the work. 
And then you're asking, okay, but then why is there drips going over? You know that that's, that wasn't an accident. You know it was intentional. Yeah. Uh, and, and then you start, this, you start going deeper and start inquiring into why, why those decisions have been made. And I guess the, the out, the, the, um, how that's expressed visually is, is different in, 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 the, in my work, but definitely that's my approach. Um, yeah. I, I want to hit you on different levels. I want you to be um, drawn in by the color. And that's come from, 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 from my days of doing graffiti. You know, you'd, you'd paint a train and sometimes, you, you know, the train, the only thing, the only thing that anyone would see of the, of, of the train is the colors. You wouldn't mm -hmm. see the, the, the wild star. You wouldn't be able to break down the letters or anything. It's, it's yeah. for the general public, but you, the, I understood that the, the universal thing here was how the public um, interacted and how the colors resonated. So that's something that I've brought from those, those things into my work. So I, 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 with my work, what I'm trying to do is like, you have the color, you know, color is super important to me, draw people in, but then later on, there's other little stories that have been told within the actual story. And then on top of that, you've got the actual story of the subject. Like I said, I realized that using social media is, is our way. Like in terms of us being like, you know, grit, this, this is our way we can tell stories with social media and reach global platform. Um, which which is um, draws me into what 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 you originally talked about in terms of you know being asked to do an online online show and and but I'm sure you're going to get to that so oh yeah on. most definitely well my next question you know to both of you is how do you see your work participating in the future of uh, online you know what I mean as you know things kind of go into like the Bitcoin era and more virtual exhibitions, things like the different fairs that have been going on, like uh, Beyond the Streets, uh, our Basel has like, continuing uh, online viewing rooms. How do you guys see your work um, evolving in these spaces? Yeah, so um, actually, uh, you know, virtual exhibitions also in South Africa, you know, they've been, you know, they've been happening, you know, with um, um, color openings and stuff, you know, but um, lately, because, you know, uh, COVID somehow, it, the, the, what you call it, the curve, we have been slowing down, you know, it hasn't been crazy that much. So uh, there was, there've been like a few fiscal exhibitions you know, but I think everyone is transitioning into, you know, virtual, virtual exhibitions, you know, because it, 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 it makes, you know, life easier for collectors because there are also collectors who are still serious about, you know, social distancing and all that, you know, yeah. but in terms, apart from COVID, I think, you know, virtual exhibitions are, are very important. You know, they, they make life easier for everyone. You know, mm. you don't have to don't have to uh, attend, you know, gallery openings or miss, you know, gallery openings, you know, you can always, you know, make time, you know, wherever you'll be, you can just view, you know, online and get to see what the artist is all about, you know, view clips, videos and stuff and engage with the work even better, you know, yeah. once you get time, you can, all, you know, end up visiting, you know, the physical space, but while it's having the knowledge of what is already you know, happen, mm -hmm. you know. So I think it's, it's visual exhibitions are becoming, you know, uh, very vital, you know, in the art world because they just make uh, um, a brand awareness more accessible than, you know, when you have to attend, you know, openings and stuff. Because also like for instance, weekends, gallery is closed, you know. So you, 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 you are kind of like hindered you know, from, from viewing the artworks, you know. But now virtual exhibitions, they make, they make life simpler for everyone, for the artists, for the galleries, for collectors, and also the business model changes. You know, I think it's for the better for everyone. Most definitely. Um, yeah, Jeff, you got anything to add on that one, brother? <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> I'll be honest. I'll be honest. When you when you asked to do a a a, a um a, a be involved in a, 
virtual show, we, we had this discussion, I was like, really, really uh, appreciative of the invitation, but I was like, virtual show, I'm not sure that's for me. <laughs> you know, I, I, I hadn't paid any mind to anything that's been going on. To me, it was just like, meh, wasn't interested. Um, and when you showed us the, um, the first mock-up, I still wasn't sure, but I was still appreciative. <laughs> but when you showed us the final, uh, you know, uh, dr draft of the, of, of, the, um, of the show, I was like, wow. Like, it really made me realize that I'd kind of slept on this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then I started to, because uh, my eyes were now open, I started to realize that things had shifted, definitely during this whole period of COVID. Like, like everybody's on it. Like, you know, lots of big galleries, a lot of the, you know, the, the, the street stuff is, you know, is on, on virtual now. And I was like, okay, this is, and being involved in it and seeing the potential and seeing that this is something, you know, just the fact that, you know, it's a beautiful thing that, being involved in this particular show, you know, pretty much all, all, the, all the artists that are, uh, are involved in the show are following each other's work and we're interacting with each other on different levels. You know, even in the yeah. Greek chat, there's, a, there's, there's a, some banter going on and we haven't even met each other. You know, I think mm. that's, just, that, that's, that's just amazing. And, and there's, there's so many things that can come from this that couldn't come from, you know, the agility that, that's, mm. that you know you, you 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 know people may not be aware that you turn this thing around in breakneck speed. It's crazy, you know, that we're all in the same space and being able to uh, show our work uh, and, and 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 in this on this platform to to a global audience. It's it's fantastic. So I'm really excited. I'm really excited that I'm excited, and I'm really <laughs> excited that to see what the possibilities are, and I'm also excited to see how this can enhance the actual physical experience because you know yeah. i was i was able this this week to go to some physical shows that i, I haven't been to no shows for, for so long and i was like i like this i need this <laughs> you know so i feel i feel full now because i've got the physical and the digital mm -hmm. you know so yeah let's let's see what can happen you know most definitely so um we'll tell the folks that are on the call thank you all for being on and we have uh, like Dref mentioned, uh, he has his print. Um, also, Great Joy has a book that's out. Um, please reach out to both of them for that to get your copy of that. Um, so just to wrap it up, guys, where do you see your work um, moving forward as a, a portrait, uh, uh, I guess, in, in, in a portrait? Like, where do you see your next event of work being? What, be, if this is your yesteryear, what is your tomorrow? Yeah, so like for instance, I, I've been, you know, working with nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. So I, I work with uh, SOS Children's Village and I also work with Operation Smile. I think you saw that earlier in the year. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, I think for, for personal development, that's helping me a lot. And, you know, I'm starting to realize certain things which I think, you know, about life itself and engagement with, you know, with people who need help, you know. Yes. So I think my whole idea of being an artist is to, is to engage, you know, is to engage and grow, you know, like from a personal level, you know, to, to, to community level, because mm -hmm. I think there's so much to be done, especially in our communities um, back here home in Africa. You know, there's so much to be done. You know, there are certain um, certain boundaries which need to be reached. You know, so I think I want my art to advocate for change. I want to change people's lives. I I really want to you know to 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 create an empire. You know, for 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 for, for new artists. You know? and you know, better engagement with the community. That's it. That's that's what I think. I want for myself and I want my art to tell, you know, going forward. It's beautiful. Wait, we waiting on you, brother giraffe. <laughs> um, yeah, for, for, for me, um, I, the thing that I've learned in this period of time is the importance of being still. Like I feel like over the last few years, I've really spread myself thin 
Um, and, you know, I've done a lot of traveling, a lot of work in the streets. But I kind of realized that the fuel for all of that stuff is, is my studio practice. And um, that's what this opportunity has, has afforded me. And I really want to uh, take time with my studio practice, you know, work on my narrative, work on the inquiry in my work and um, use that as a springboard for the things that I've already started in motion in terms of my world travels, in terms of residencies, in terms of showing my work in, you know, different formats, you know, nationally and internationally. But definitely my studio practice is something that I'm, I'm really happy that I've had this opportunity to be still and to look within and to ask myself, what is it that I want to bring forward? Um, instead of just constantly moving and constantly creating. Um, Cause I think, you know, you get, get to a point where things start to get a bit stagnant and, and, and don't move, move forward. So that, that's really what I want to do. And, you know, as, as, as with um, Great Joy, I want to, you know, I want my work to be meaningful, I want it to be impactful, I, I want to inspire. Um, and I also want to get myself to a position where I can also provide a platform um, for um, other artists, you know, in terms of um, connecting the different friends that I have and seeing how we can connect, you know, those, those dis disparate, um, we talked yesterday about the, 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 um, the, the, the tribe, our tribe is global. Um, let's see how that can connect with, you know, in terms of like using the, the, the digital platforms and the internet and, and, the, you know, and so on and so forth and see what can happen there. And also finally, um, really um, give a thank you for the opportunity um, and uh, I'm really looking forward to building on the, the relationships that we've, um, that have come from, from this opportunity that you've created for us. Awesome. Thank you. Thank to all the artists and thank you all today for uh, being with us. Um, uh, yeah, that's all we have. Uh, thank you everybody again for being on the call. Um, please stay tuned for, we have another uh, talk tonight at 630, which will be posted. And also this talk will be up for viewing afterwards uh, in about a couple of hours. So thank you again, everyone have a, a safe and blessed day. Thank you, Jeff and Great Joy, and we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks, Thank guys. <laughs> Cheers. All right.